What's up? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Average Joe. Guys, we're going to talk more about crypto. There's so many great things going on in the space. I feel like, like right now we're playing like musical chairs because there's so many moving parts that's going on. It's like everybody's trying to find their perfect crypto. You know, these exchanges, um, they're coming online. Mass adoption is, on, is coming online. And it seems like Everyone is trying to find their place and their spot in crypto. JP Morgan is looking for people that have a lot of crypto knowledge. They have a lot of um, institutional knowledge or they have an overall working knowledge of not only uh, crypto with great utility, but all of the ins and outs of derivatives, futures. They're looking for people all over. There are so many different um, uh, institutions that have decided to offer cryptocurrencies to their clients. Um, there's just so many things that's going on in this space. And one of the things also, I don't know if he's so much good for the space or if he's just like, I don't know, like a tag in this or sometimes, you know, he's pulling against you, sometimes he's pulling with you. But that is Elon Musk. So Dogecoin spiked briefly a little bit today because um, Elon Musk is basically tweeting again. And what he's tweeting about is now he said that basically uh, transaction fees on Doge. He's saying that one Doge right now is a little bit too much. You know, he's trying to get the transaction fees down. And that's cool, but, you know, it seems like, you know, one minute you're helping us and next minute you're hurting us. So I just say, Elon, just go somewhere and sit down for a minute, man. You got your billions. Let us do this right here. I know he's a very, very smart guy. Also, guys, uh, what is it? FTX, the same exchange that is named uh, for the Miami Heat Arena. It is a exchange where you can uh, basically uh, get exposed to derivatives, futures, things like that right there, um, along with CME. But FTX has, Major League Baseball has decided to jump into crypto also. They have decided to wear the name of the exchange on the lapel of their umpires in Major League Baseball. So, you know, it's just so many um, avenues in this crypto space that people are going different directions. Now, we know that basically when you start talking about sports, there's a lot of things going on in the NFT uh, sphere of crypto. We have a lot of athletes that basically have their own NFTs. If you're not uh, sure what an NFT is, basically, um, let me give you a quick example. You remember we used to have these trading cards? Well, some of you uh, Gen Xers, you probably do, and definitely Millennials, but basically the NFTs is the new baseball card, okay, new football card, okay? It is the athlete's accomplishments that is done in a um, a new virtual form. Some of them are, some of them are in the form of paintings, just different types of things, okay? But you have athletes, you have rappers, you have musicians that have decided to get into the NFT space. Also, India, in India, crypto is up by 200%. And we know that's a great thing because uh, we have SHIB, um, the largest amount of SHIB that was given away, basically is on the Indian exchange. And I don't know if you knew, but SHIB is basically, it's only been in creation or its accessibility has only been available since August of 2020. That's only 10 months. And would you know that SHIB is up 495, 300, 495, 329.63%. That is about 500% per month. And just understand, this is just my opinion. You know, this is my, I'm a conspiracist. You know, it is what it is. I believe that the lights was turned off for a little bit as we get ourselves situated, the governments, and they get these laws and they bring these exchanges on. I think, I think that we already know that, you know, these governments, they do things that they want. They do they, exactly what they want to do. They're going to put themselves in the best position, period. Okay. So before the lights went out, 
and we had all this FUD going on around the market. Basically, crypto was mooning. It was everywhere. And this is the reason why I know it's not going anywhere. See, when people, when people start talking about basically uh, crypto winners and bear markets, things like that right there, they hawking and they aching back to 2017. Well, back then, of course, we had some other cryptocurrencies that are altcoins that had utility, but they were not realized then. You understand what I'm saying? It's so many cryptocurrencies right now that are online. The use case and the utility is being used like Cardano, Polygon, Matic, Polkadot. Um, there's so many dope things that is going on in crypto. So the utility of these altcoins are being used and they're solving real problems around the world. So that's why I know it's not going anywhere. And Bitcoin has already been um, uh, likened to uh, gold as a store of value. Listen, it's not going anywhere. Do not be tricked out your crypto. So along with uh, FTX, um, basically, you know, getting into the space with Major League Baseball. So now they have Major League Baseball, the exchange, they have exposure there. And they have also have exposure with the NBA. And also we have the NFL. They are heavy into the crypto space, right? There are so many dope things that's going on. I want to talk to you about a story dealing with the NFTs, okay? So basically, like I said basically before, NFTs are basically creation cryptos or creator cryptos, okay? Non-fungible tokens, okay? That is what NFT stands for, okay? And you have a lot of artists, creators, musicians, that are basically displaying their work in an NFT form. And I think that is so dope, right? So this is sister named Lady Phoenix, right? Um, she's a black woman and basically she has created a, a museum, if you will, or a space for black artists through Decentraland in the metaverse. Now I know that the people that my Facebook family and friends that have been following me down um, in this crypto space for a while. And I used to talk about Decentraland and some of my first purchases when I talked about earlier this year. And Decentraland Manor was one of my first ones. And I also talked about how you were able to buy plots of land, real estate, so to speak, in the metaverse you know, through Decentraland. The last time, I, I remember the first time I checked and I should have bought myself a plot then. So, so basically Decentraland is a NFT project, okay? I think the last time I saw it was like 40 cents. It could be a little higher, maybe 50 cents per token. The tokens are used in the metaverse. They just had a, it was in April, they basically had a, a live casino um, display in the metaverse back in the spring of this year. And basically you wear VR goggles, I guess, you know, you go in there and you gamble using the mana tokens. So it's got so many dope things going on in here, but I want to share with you this sister's project. Um, take a look around this, um, this space that she has created. So basically she bought her a plot and she built a museum and the museum is for, um, I'm assuming black artists or creators. And she wanted for us black people to have a space that is carved out specifically for black artists. So I thought that was so dope, you know, that she did that right there. And I want to share with you her video and I want to share with you some of her art. And this will be under fair use as a teachable moment. Take a look. I'll be back on the end. So I want to show you some of her other artwork. You can also find her on Instagram at yes, lady Phoenix. Take a look and I'll be back. Well, lady Phoenix, uh, let us know about your background and let us know, uh, you know, what year you got into crypto and what inspired you to get into the NFT market. 
So I've been in, in the crypto space and digital art curating since 2013. And I was inspired to get into the NFT market because of the ideas of sovereignty. I think that when you have creative people um, who inspire the entire world, it's for the benefit and elevation of the world to keep those that add inspiration to humanity, keep them uplifted and keep them in a place of wellness so that they can, in abundance, right? So that they can continue inspiring the world. And so um, I've heard a saying kind of like floating about that I really agree with. And it's, if you free the artist, you free the world, right? And so um, right. I'm in service to that. And I think that the first step on freedom is uh, sovereignty, a more sovereign path, economic path, and a more sovereign practice. So I'm in, I'm in absolute service to that, and I've been in service to that since 2013. Can you describe to us where we are right now? Um, the yeah. name of the, the exhibit and uh, the piece in front of us. Yep, we're now in the Museum of the Digital Diaspora. This is a museum that I built uh, a couple months ago. The architect is uh, a guy called Rob Crawford. He's also the artist that, uh, com that collaborated with the uh, Monk Estate to build or to construct Icon Monk. Icon Sorry. Monk is is a uh, audio reactive NFT. So the second work by um, Rob Crawford uh, is this other audio reactive NFT. This one's called uh, Crypto Monk. And I love the, the colorways of Crypto Monk because it kind of reminds me of the Matrix, you know? And it's kind of neat to think of Thelonious Monk uh, in the Matrix. You know, considering that, you know, when he was alive, uh, racism was so wild that he wasn't allowed to to walk in the front doors of many of the places that he performed, right? Wow. And, you know, he also had to just like play and, and get going. I mean, certainly there were friends that he had that were, you know, white people or whomever, right? But you have to think about the times, right? Not necessarily individual relationships, but the times where, you know, black people could not be seen sitting in the same rooms um, especially for leisure as white people. And if there were black people there, they were there in service of uh, white joy, uh, white leisure, white comfort, right? And so to think that a man um, at his level, basically a musical genius, um, would show up to these places, blow people's minds, you know, have them literally have this uh, kind of spiritual experience through the music and then have to like leave out the back door which is pretty crazy. He's, he's playing at top places, but at the same time, not really seen as an equal, right? And so what I love about um, this particular project um, is that now he can walk into the front doors of the metaverse. Like that's really, really wild, right? To think that a person in their physical uh, life didn't have certain advantages, but that they can be reintroduced into life in a in a metaverse or a society, right? A digital society where that person is now, you know, kind of revered, right? And respected in a way they never really got fully while they were alive. Because we make the rules of this society, right? We make the rules of the metaverse. So to think that a person can, I don't want to say resurrected, I don't want it to sound too strange, um, but that the, the spirit can live on, you know, yes. in a place that's both virtual and sort of like physical for us at the same time right we can still enjoy them oftentimes is this is a discussion that happens when it comes to art you know saying well why like someone asked me on a clubhouse why are there only 1.3 percent uh black artists in the space who are being collected mm -hmm. that's not really a question for me that's a question yeah. for you as a collector why aren't you doing mm -hmm. more to why collect black you? work <laughs> right and so yeah. yep. what i brought up is that a lot of times our work is uh figurative Right. And so m people look like people have been taught to be afraid of the black image or they've been taught anti-blackness, even black people. Right. Anti-blackness has been taught to black people. So everyone is under this oppression of anti-blackness. And so, you know, when a work is figurative, meaning they have black uh, subjects, you know, in in the uh, work itself, such as like Crypto Monk or um, Icon Monk, if people can't identify with that with that black person right because they're first seeing that that person is black before they actually acknowledge that that's a person right mm -hmm. um they have to reconcile with years and years and years 
of miseducation around blackness. They have to reconcile with their own anti-blackness, even as a black person, right? And so if people can't identify with what they're seeing, with what's being presented before them, there's no feeling for them, they won't buy. And if the feeling they have is one that might be slightly negative in any kind of way or averse, then of course they won't buy. And since there's a great deal of anti-blackness, to me that would explain why black artists are not collected at the same rates as other artists and why they might only represent 1.3%. But what I'd like to um, illustrate or you know, kind of center in saying that is, I think it's remarkable how we have used the space. So one office created the first black arts district, right? Given opportunity and also visibility to tons of artists from the culture, right? Also utilizing in a very intelligent and um, strategic way, this idea of virtual placemaking, right? Mm -hmm. Saying that, you know, NFT artists or artists using NFTs uh, look like this one body of people and you can find them scattered all throughout various metaverses. Now, when we're looking for black artists and we're curious about what's happening within the culture, one off has provided that space and saying, this is not everyone, but this is a good number of people in the space. Please have a look around, make sure that you, you know, buy art, right? Make sure you enjoy, tweet, tell people about it. And the other thing that I love is the, the use of the space. I don't know of anyone within other communities who's thinking about the metaverse and the, and the way we are, right? I love the way that we're using um, our cultural um, kind of values side by side with the, met, with the values of the metaverse or these new technologies. That's something unique about us. I don't see that happening among other cultures. So while people are worried about, hey, why aren't more black people being connected, collected like white people? Me, I'm not worried about that. And I feel that should not be our focus. Our focus should be at, be the way we're using the tools. Does it connect culturally for us to provide significance and impact? I'm glad, like I said, I'm glad that you showed us this because again, the message is clear. And I think, like you said, we have in our community, in the black community, we definitely have a specific way to uh, to basically be successful in the art world that we haven't seen before, and yeah. I'm glad that I'm definitely glad to have you on, Micah. Definitely glad to have you, Lady Fee. I'm definitely glad you all could join me on here uh, in this Crypto Voxels world in Black Arts District in the MODD. Uh, absolutely uh, amazing artist, uh, Micah and Lady Fee. Thank you for coming on. Wow, wasn't that dope? I mean, this space is about to be lit. I mean, you can do so many different things with NFTs. Like I said, um, musicians are in the NFT space. Of course, artists and spoken word. They have all different kind of people in the NFT space. This right here is one of her artworks also. I thought this one right here was pretty dope. She has some beautiful creations. Like I said, you can find her on Instagram at yes lady. Phoenix. I don't know the lady at all. So y'all go over there and subscribe to that sister and just take it. I'll uh, go over there and look around. She got some stuff in there, man, that is so beautiful. You're like, whoa, some stuff is just like mind blowing. You're like, wow. Also, keep in mind that Decentraland also is hiring in their casino. Yes, they're hiring in their virtual reality casinos in real life. And I heard the pay was pretty decent. So, this crypto space, this whole thing is getting ready to be mind blowing. Okay. We're going to make a lot of money. I can feel it. SHIB will blow any moment, especially when we get that Coinbase listing. Guys, we're in the right place at the right time. Okay. So I love you guys. Remember, this is not financial advice. Okay. I'm just showing you what I got going on in this crypto space. Uh, be safe until the next video, guys. I love you. Average Joe out. Peace.